What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Or welcome to your first time here. In my early 20s, I lived on an old homestead that was located on Tennessee, Kentucky state line. The homestead was actually located on the Tennessee side. The nearest neighbor was down the hill about a mile and a half on the Kentucky side. And the electricity, it came in from the Tennessee side, but it was uh, about three mile from the nearest house that way. And the electricity lines ran through the woods up to my house. And it was a great place to live. It was nice and quiet. And I could go out and there was just surrounded by forest. And I loved living there. The house was about 110 years old when I was living there. And it is in pretty bad shape actually the home was. The outside was good, had new siding on it and it had new metal roofing. But the inside was 110 years old and there wasn't any indoor plumbing no bathroom no sink nothing like that you had electricity and that was it the water came from you know a hand pump outside and like i said i lived there and i loved it i lived there for about two years actually and winter there was cold because the house was old and you know there was no insulation to speak of inside the walls and but i loved the quietness and i loved the seclusion but it had its downfalls you know, like in winter time i heat it with wood but during winter the electricity was bad to go off because you had that three miles power lines ran through the woods and here you know usually when we have a snow a winter storm it starts out with rain first and then that usually freezes and then it turns into ice with snow on top of that if you have little power lines running through forest like that for that long a distance, those lines are most likely to go down because so many trees you know, can fall across those power lines and shut your power off. And I remember one time up there, I was actually without power for over three weeks. Three weeks without power. And you know I was fine because I heat with wood, but I had no real backups at the time because like I said, I was in my early 20s. I hadn't been prepping long. I was more into outdoor survival then. That's why I liked the place up in the mountains where I was at because I was into outdoor survival. I wasn't really into preparing for, you know, power outages and things like that. However, you know, having a generator would have been awesome. It made my life so much easier and so much better up there because, you know, I had no power whatsoever. I had no lights whatsoever. I had a kerosene lantern and that wood stove and a battery powered radio for entertainment for three weeks you know guys it wasn't bad it was definitely doable and people have lived without electricity most of most of their existence in the world with that said though if i'd had a generator if i would have had something like this my life would have been so much easier and guys even here where i am now you know, my power went off the winter before last for three or four days here and it goes off usually every winter because of the power lines again getting weighted down with the ice limbs falling across but here you know they get it fixed within two or three days usually but you know what if they didn't what if you were out of power for months it'd be a extreme situation and difficult for the majority of people to actually deal with so having backup power options is definitely a huge plus and food should be number one on your priority list because you have to have food to live but you also need to have shelter you be able to keep warm and having you know something you can have lights you can recharge batteries and things like that is definitely a huge plus and if you're on something like insulin has to be kept cold or using a CPAC and having something like this right here is definitely recommended and actually a survival necessity like I said before you know everyone's prepping priorities will be it's kind of the same, but kind of different depending on your personal situation. Now guys, no doubt you've seen a lot of these reviews of these power stations here on YouTube, and there's a reason behind that. These companies, they seek out YouTube creators in the prepping and survival and homesteading niche, and they send emails out asking us that we want to have a sample of their product for review. And you know, most people are going to take these for review. However, I'm getting covered up in offers to review these things. I have had probably six or seven different emails in the last couple of months 
offering me you know free products and an affiliate program to review their products however you know i'm not affiliated with any company they have offered affiliate programs but i don't sign up for those because i want to give 100 percent authentic reviews i don't want my reviews to be swayed in any way by you know any financial gain like i said the company did send these to me for free these two here i actually bought the honda gas power generator about seven or eight years ago with my own money but the company sent these here to me for free i guess my recommendation is that if you are going to buy you know a portable power station like one of these i recommend that you avoid you know something like this right here 300 watt unit not usable for you know most circumstances you can charge your phone up with that or something like that run maybe a light and that is about it for this unit however this one over here is a much better unit it's more costly this one right here as you can see the size of that compared to my hand very very small and it is a little bit over 400 dollars i think it was and i checked on this guys this one over here you can see i've not even really used this because i haven't even taken the plastic cover off the display there because when i saw this you know they sent this to me for free so i said okay i'll go ahead and take this and i'll give it a look and when i got this i saw how small this was and you know i hadn't really I hadn't really read over the specs or anything, but I got this and saw it was just very, very tiny. And saw that it had this 300 watt output. And I said, this is it going to be recommended on my channel because you know it's not going to be usable for most people. And you're going to be disappointed buying something like this, even at the $400 price point. But guys, on the other hand, this Opus unit here is a much better unit. This is actually, 1800 watt unit with 4000 watt peak output meaning if you had this up to like a refrigerator and you know how a refrigerator will kick on then it will shoot that power consumption up and that 4000 watt peak is to compensate for that but 1800 watt unit very good very powerful this has the life pro 4 battery and it is rated for 2500 charges meaning that 2500 plus charges meaning that if you drain this all the way down to zero and you could charge this up 2500 times 2500 times and they guarantee that the battery and unit will continue to put out the same output that it's rated for up to 2500 full drainings and recharging of the battery so guys this is definitely a excellent unit i've used this to power power tools this will also power your refrigerator cpap machine it also power you know a small window air conditioning very good very versatile and it has actually i like about this right here the main thing i like about this it has two different inputs so if you have you know two other chargers like this and you plug this in you plug this into your wall outlet in your home or into a generator like this if you're doing something else it will charge this up if you have two of these you can plug both of these in and charge double double speed, so to speak. You know, because you'll have double going in. If you had this one charger and you plug this in, it takes about seven to eight hours to charge this thing up using one charger. However, if you use two of these, if you buy two of these, it comes with one, but you have to buy the second one yourself. If you have two of these, you can plug one in each one. And plug this in and it takes half the time to actually charge it's very convenient you can also use this to charge with and use a solar panel at the same time or two different solar panels you can actually buy solar panels from opus that goes with this unit they didn't send me any solar panels but i have some that work with this already anyways but guys you're definitely better off to spend the extra money get something like this right here that will put out more wattage that will run more things and that will be a lot more useful than something like this over here now you can get a gas power generator if you can get something like this right here this honda generator and something like this if you have both of these and you get some solar panels then you're going to be in the catbird seat as the saying goes this generator over here i gave 1200 dollars for this and it's an excellent generator it sips gasoline it's very quiet very reliable and an excellent gas power generator however you know as with any gas power generator you're going to have noise you're going to have you know exhaust coming out of the unit when it's running 
you have to have this set outside and you know it could attract a lot of attention you have to have gasoline stored and you know i eventually ran out of gasoline if you have something like this right here it is quiet you can have this inside your home you have this beside your bed and no noise whatsoever if you have solar panels you can charge this up with those solar panels different ways to charge like i said you can use the supplied charger plugged in the wall you can use solar panels you can plug this this into the generator as you're doing something else and charge this up you know at the same time you can also plug this into like my truck bed back here where i have the outlet here on my truck if you're doing something else you can be charging this thing up so definitely a lot of a lot of pluses to this over this if you can get both because they both have their advantages and their benefits however if i had to pick you know just one this gas power generator or you know the opus power bank i would go with this simply because of the fact that it is quiet don't have to store any fuel for this and there's less parts with this than they are this if you're dealing with gasoline engines you know they do break down they do stop up in the, in the carburetors and things like that they have to have maintenance and things and this here requires a lot less maintenance than this here so if i had to choose one you know i would choose this over this but like i said if you can get both but if you only get one get this but don't get 400 dollars for this right here because you're not going to be happy with this Go ahead and save some money, sell something else, and buy something like this. Because like I said, this will run your refrigerator to keep your insulin cool. It run your freezer. It run a window air conditioning. You can run power tools on this. You know, I've ran a uh, sawzall and a jigsaw at the same time in this just to test this out. And I'll show you that here in a minute. I'll plug them both in and we'll run those both at the same time. But a very good unit, very quiet, and I think it's definitely worth the money if you're in the market for one of these units. All right, guys, here we go. The ultimate test. Guys, that was a load of fun that definitely demonstrates what this unit here is capable of. If you're in the market for this, and I recommend this, it's one of the best ones you can get, in my opinion, because of the wattage output, because of the battery life. Excellent. If you're in the market for one of these, you don't have no backup power where you are, this is excellent. If you think the video was useful, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Give me a quick more about it here. I'll see you all in the next video. Hope. Oh.